Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Flow Bash channel. If you guys are new here, thanks for stopping in. My name's Eric. I am the owner and operator of Flow Bass Fishing Charters down here in Southeast Florida. And in today's video, I kind of wanted to go over a situation that happened to me for the first time. Obviously, you guys can tell from the title of this video that I came across an injured manatee. Now, this has never happened to me before, and I feel like sharing this video with you uh, will help educate some people who have never come across this before who may not know what to do. Now, I had a pretty good idea of the steps I needed to take, but I definitely learned a lot when I actually got on the phone and spoke to the appropriate people. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you some of the clips that I captured both on my cell phone as well as on my GoPro chess cam. I do have to warn you guys that while these images aren't necessarily very graphic, it's definitely sensitive material. So if this is something that may disturb you, I'm gonna give you a second right now to go ahead and click away from this video because we are going to be looking at an injured manatee that is in distress. So if this is a sensitive subject for you, go ahead and click away now. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink the screen down onto the corner of the screen here, and I'm gonna go ahead and narrate and watch this with you guys and kind of let you know my thought process and everything that I was learning as it was unfolding in front of me. So my buddy George and I, we are out fishing in Everglades National Park. I mean, we are way, way out in the boonies. You know, we do have a marine radio with us for emergencies, but other than that, I mean, there's, there's nothing out there, guys. Um, so what you can see off in the top left corner, it'll come into view a lot better in just a second, is uh, the manatee. At first we had no idea what it was, uh, so we were kind of just making our way. We we're fishing this little cove, making our way in that general direction, and we we're getting closer and closer. And you know, eventually, you know, once we got within about 200 yards of this manatee, that's when we realized it was a manatee. And it was acting a little strange but uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, at least from the distance that we were at. Typically, when you see a manatee out in the wild, you're gonna see its snout come up and take a little breath of air. Uh, it's only about the size of a large coconut. Sometimes you will see their backs out of the water, but for the most part, the manatees, they stay primarily submerged underneath the water. You're not gonna see their entire body. This manatee, on the other hand, almost you know a full third of its body was up out of the water so when we finally did realize what it was uh, we kind of went in for a closer look because it's it's pretty unusual the only other time i've seen a, the majority of a manatee's body out of the water is when it's kind of belly crawling across a shallow flat you know sometimes they get up there and they'll they'll take a nap or if they're trying to get up into shallower water to feed on some of the vegetation that you know might be in the shallowest spot so it's not totally out of the ordinary to see a manatee with a lot of its body out of the water, but it is quite rare. So let's keep on going. There you go now, dude. It's kind of weird. I think he's just having a good time. I think he's definitely on his side. You can see how far away it is. We really weren't quite sure what was going on just yet. Rolling up on trees, I can hear. Yeah, so I clicked the mo trolling motor on a little bit higher uh, just to get up there because it was getting stranger and stranger the longer we watched this go on. You going there? Yeah, man. And we still weren't aware of the situation just yet. And here you see I'm breaking That's out my crazy. phone so I can get some really good footage of it because it was just strange at this point. We didn't understand that it was uh, it was in distress right now. Yeah, so you could see it's, I mean, I even want to say almost, almost half of its body is out of the water. And, you know, it still looks in pretty good shape, but uh, once we get up close and it turns its back to us, then reality started to hit in. But aside from that, it's kind of just floating around. You know, its flippers are tucked up on its body. Yeah, 
and I'll stop it here for just a second. You'll hear in the video uh, a burbling and you know, kind of like venting sound. This was happening the entire time after this manatee would take a breath of air. So just keep that in mind. Wow. And there'll be a little surprise for you coming up in just a second. You can see it now. There's two of them. Oh, there's a baby. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Must be feeding. That's it. Oh, look at the freaking prop scar, dude. Yeah, it's a bad one. Wow. That's a really, really bad prop scar. I don't think, I don't know if it was a, from the prop or the skeg of a boat. It was, it was a singular mark and it was very, very deep. I think it's okay. And it was long. It was about this long across this manatee. It's more than two feet long. Originally, we were thinking maybe it was only like 14 oh, inches. Another one right there. No, the baby moved. Oh, that's okay. Maybe there is one. Was it the same one? Yeah, so the baby manatee, it would swim off about 10 yards and then come right back. There was nothing wrong with the baby manatee whatsoever. But uh, now... We're supposed to call if there's an injured manatee. I mean, that's like... I'm going to stop it here for just a second. So... I did cut up the clips a little bit because they were just going on quite long, but at this point, we knew something was wrong. This manatee could not right itself. Now, I thought maybe it was on its side to feed the baby manatee, but as I kind of went back to some of the education that I got back in high school, I was in the environmental science program, um, and during our marine biology course, you know, we actually got to study and we visited a couple manatee sanctuaries. and. You know, the baby manatees will come up from underneath and start to feed. With the, you know, a mama manatee laying on its side like that, they don't, they don't normally feed like that. So that's when we were like, something seems wrong. This manatee can't right itself. It just, every time it kind of swims around, it, it just rolls over on its side, back to the same side facing up. So that's when we were like, this doesn't look good. Plus the burbling and gargling noises that it was constantly making. Uh, just were really bad. Um, its eyes were shrunken back into its head. That was another telltale sign that something is really not right with this this mammal whatsoever. So we took it upon ourselves to uh, make that decision and call FWC. Yeah, you could see right here it was just struggling to right itself, rolling, moving its fins. It, it just couldn't right itself. Okay, so stopping right here for just a second too. Another thing I want to just make mention of, we, you know, took it upon ourselves not to just blow up on this manatee and get right up on it. Um, just keep that in mind. If, just observe these creatures at a distance no matter what. Um, I, I'm sure you guys have seen some of these viral videos, especially the one of the, the golden retriever swimming after the manatees. And there's maybe like 20 of them in a pod and they all just blow up. You don't want that to happen. They could rock the boat and knock us over. That would be very bad. Or, you know, maybe it causes a big enough disturbance where it knocks the plug out of the back of the boat and you don't realize it. Also something you gotta watch out for. So that's very rare that would happen, but you never know. When you're out there in the boonies, you have to take every precaution. And of course, the health of the creature is paramount. So I just wanted to make mention of that. Um, but here, I called FWC. I have AT&T, so I still had service in the park. That's the lone tower out there, the one with the red blinking light. That's the AT&T tower. I had service. I was able to actually look up the phone number, which I'll put right here for you guys. Now, obviously, this is for a manatee injury. If you're in the state of Florida, you call Florida Fish and Wildlife. Um, any other state, unfortunately, I can't uh, advise you on. But I called them, and kind of this is what ensues. So I'll let you hear most of the conversation with the dispatch officer. Hey, my name is Eric Planer. I'm just calling to report uh, an injured manatee with a calf. I'm sorry, you're breaking up, sir. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm calling to report an injured manatee. I'm out here in... What county is that in? Yeah, it's Miami-Dade. Better location that I can validate it to. Everglades, Na you. Everglades oh. National Park. So, I know I said I'd let this go through, but one thing I want to mention is that uh, it's very important if you're going to report a manatee injury to know your exact location. Now I had my chart plotter opened up and I had the GPS location or coordinates, um, but when you're giving these general directions, they just kind of want to narrow down the zone so they can then pass this along to the appropriate biologist that you know covers the area you're in. So it's very important to know what county you're in. Now we were so far out in the boonies, I thought we were still in Miami-Dade, but I was incorrect. We were actually in Monroe County. Just wanted to mention that. We'll continue. Everglades National. And where are you in the park? Is the exact location. Okay. okay. And it's an injured manatee. What's injured about it? Uh, it's, it's really bloated. It can't, and it's just swimming on its side. Got a big, huge prop scar. And it's there. and it has a very large prop scar on its back. All right, I'm gonna send this over to our biologist, and they will probably reach out to you very shortly. All right. All right, and if there's any any special notation, this manatee does have a calf with it. It does have a calf. Okay, yeah. I'll make note of that. All right, thank you, sir. Um, just be on the lookout for a number that you may not uh, recognize. All right. All right, I will. Thank you. Okay, so that was my call with the dispatch officer. You know, just to summarize, basically you wanna give them a description of you know, what you're reporting on, an injured manatee, what's injured about it, what's it doing. Obviously you need to know your location, general location. He asked for kind of the, you know, I wasn't necessarily in a city, but obviously if you're within a city, if within any city limits, you tell them the city, and the county so they can uh, kind of narrow down the results of which biologist they need to forward this to and um, obviously you got to give them your full name and contact information so that's basically it now what happened here is i hung up with that gentleman he then forward this to the appropriate biologist for uh, miami dade county which again was incorrect uh, but i didn't know that at the time so he forwarded it to the biologist, I received a phone call back within less than two minutes. That's how fast they actually responded to this and how serious they do take manatee injuries. So you definitely wanna report this as fast as possible um, and give them as much information as possible. Right when he was about to hang up, I was like, you know what, he needs to know this manatee has a calf as well, because that's very important. Because if that is the mother and it dies, the calf is not gonna survive. So another very important thing to note. So now I'm gonna switch over to my conversation with the biologist. Okay, just bear with me while I pull that up real quick. So right okay. here, um, just in the beginning, yeah. I gave her my exact the GPS calf, location. So. Yeah, it does have a calf. Um, and uh, it's, it's kind of, I mean, right now it's made its way up to the mangrove shoreline and it just kind of beached itself. Okay. So it's planted in shallow water? As of right now, it, it was not earlier. It's um, like completely out in shallow water, like resting on sand, not floating? No, no it's it's well, kind of half floating, half just kind of wedged itself in the mangroves. Okay. It's like, it's on its side and it's kind of like rolling around. Like it's bloated. And it's... uh. Yeah, it's just making all kinds of funky noises and... Okay, um, what's the other manatee doing? Uh, it's just, it, it, it swims right next to it and every once in a while it moves around like 10 yards out and then comes right back next to, uh, to the injured manatee. Okay, can you see any marks or scars on the, on the manatee that's... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, there's a very large single prop scar. It's very, it's very white, so it looks fresh. Okay, 
Um, and I know you said it's kind of like rolling around on its side. Can you see, like, is it rocking back and forth, or does it seem like it's favoring one side over another? It, like it's bloated. It's it, do, it actually, yes, it does seem, it keeps rolling so its right side is facing up. It just, that that seems to be the, the side it, that's favoring facing upwards. And it's kind of, it's like, you know, it's kind of undulating and rocking, but it, it just always just faces that one side. Okay. Okay. And um, also, I just pulled up those coordinates, so I just want to confirm with you. Um, and how big do you think the manatee is? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, lengthwise, I would say it's about seven feet. Big is the um, smaller manatee? Three and a half, four feet. Three feet? Three to four feet. It look like one or two people could pick it up? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, and then um, I know you said that that one mark looks pretty fresh. Can you see any skin flapping around it? Yeah, you can see the blubber. Yes, a little bit. Okay. And how shallow um, is the water there where the manatee is? Four feet. Uh, it's about four feet. Okay. All right. Do you have any photos or videos of the manatee at all? Yeah, I could text you some photos. If they send. Uh, yes. If you can go ahead and text those over to this number, that would be great. Okay. And just and just a side note, the manatee kind of as of right now, it's in a different spot uh, than it previously was when it wedged itself in the mangrove. So it, it got out, but then... It's moving around a little bit. Yeah. It's okay, so it's moving around a little bit. Does it seem to be returning toward, like, the shallow area, though? Like, it'll kind of back out and go back to the, the shallows, or is it kind of just swimming around in that area now? Uh, I mean, it's it seems to just keep going back towards the mangroves. It's all about the same depth, because right at the mangrove edge, it just drops down immediately to four feet. So it's a pretty, it's all, it's about the same depth everywhere. Okay. And um, have you seen the manatee take any breaths at all? Yeah. It is, yeah. And it's, it, it takes breaths and then it, it sounds like it's like venting. It's making like some burbling noises. Like it's farting, you can say that. <laughs> okay, and how often are you? Often. It doesn't, it's not very difficult for it to stick its nose out of the water and take a breath. Because it's, it's every few seconds or every few minutes every minute or so yeah definitely no more than a minute okay so that pretty much wraps up the conversation i had with the biologist again this was i spoke to the biologist that services miami dade county i gave her all the information that you just heard as well as pictures and then she went ahead and forwarded that to the biologist that services monroe county where the manatee was actually in so that was that's the whole situation. That in this shot that's just frozen on the screen, what you can basically see is uh, back in that cove in the very far back. That's where the manatee was kind of it, it made its way to. It was just basically doing these big circles, and then it would eventually hit the mangrove. Sometimes it would get spooked when it touched the mangrove. Um, I really don't think this manatee could actually see anything. So it was uh, it's pretty. It was a sad situation to witness. Uh, both George and I were really bummed out. I was kind of at a loss for words, as you can sort of hear me say, or you know, kind of mumbling along because it was just, we were bummed out big time. It was not something that you know, we were planning on coming across, as I'm sure no one is. But um, yeah, we did uh, the best thing that we possibly could think of. So to wrap this video up, guys, you know, like I said, I just wanted to show you my situation and then just go over everything I've learned. So maybe if this ever happens to you where you come across an injured manatee or, you know, the very unfortunate event occurs where you strike a manatee with your boat, you know, it, it does happen. Obviously, I know no one wants this to happen. We all do our best to look out for these manatees. But uh, that's just kind of the reality that we live in nowadays especially with all the boats out there so first thing you want to do is make sure 
you have the FWC hotline either on speed dial or just write it down somewhere or save it in your phone, whatever you think you need to do. It's always good to have that, especially if you are an angler, hunter, boater, outdoorsman in general in the state of Florida. So always have that on hand. Uh, be sure to know exactly where you are. So we were way out in the boonies and um, I, I didn't know I was in Monroe County, but that's where we were. I didn't exactly have the cell phone service to look all this stuff up. I had to you know, wait quite a few minutes for you know, 5G to kick in so I can actually look up the phone number. Fortunately though, I had the coverage, so we did so. Otherwise, I would have had to have waited until we got back to the ramp, which would have been quite some time. We were out there for 12 hours. And then by then, who knows what would have happened to the manatee or where it actually could have swam off to. So definitely call FWC right away, uh, select the appropriate number when you hear the prompt, and then what you need to do is make sure you have pictures or video ready to go. I highly recommend pictures because you can send those via text message a lot quicker. So get all the pictures you can, uh, stay far enough away to where you don't disturb the manatee any more than you have to. Uh, make sure you're able to take photos of the injury. So what I had to do was kind of circle the boat around this manatee and I took a big nice picture of the uh, the singular prop scar. Like I said, this thing was over two feet long. Um, and I'm sure the actual strike of the boat it caused some internal damage. I don't think, you know, of course I'm not a biologist, but I don't think the prop scar itself actually is what caused the damage. I think this had, you know, uh, an impact injury and it was suffering internally. So make sure you have all the pictures ready to go. Mark your exact location. So if you don't have a chart plotter on your boat, you can always pull up Google Maps on your phone and you can get the GPS location coordinates that way as well. So make sure you have those handy, ready to go, and then just be prepared to answer all the questions that the dispatch officer and then the biologist will ask you. So obviously you need to know what's injured, what's the manatee doing, does it have a calf? That's very important. She did not ask me that question. I had to make sure she knew that manatee had a calf. So keep that in mind, look out, see if it does have a calf and let them know the state of the calf and what the calf is doing. And then uh, that's, that's basically all the information and everything you need to do. Um, you know, it's a real tough video to, to watch again. I did, so it's been, as I record this video, it's been about five days since I spoke with the second biologist that followed up, that serviced the Monroe County area. Um, I did send another text message just to ask them what, you know, may have happened with that mammal or the calf, and they didn't respond to me. They're not required to, so that's okay. Um, you know, unfortunately, what I didn't record in the video was that the biologist did say they it sounds like they're not going to be able to help the the larger injured injured manatee and their priority was to get out there and rescue the calf and then bring it to a nursery so it can you know grow up and then be able to fend for itself on its own but other than that it's getting dark <laughs> darker and darker as i make this video so um, i hope this was educational for you guys i know it was a little bit of a bummer seeing that manatee but um, I wanted to use this as a, uh, an educational video. So if this ever happens to you, if you ever come across one of these manatees that's injured, you're more educated and uh, kind of learn from my experience. And uh, you know, if, if it ever happens to me, I know exactly what I need to do. I'll have all my pictures, my location, GPS, the whole nine yards ready to go so they can get out there and do what they need to do and figure out if they can save the animal or take whatever steps they have to take. So I hope this helped a lot of you guys. Um, and that's basically it. So thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. And uh, hope you guys have a good night. See you later.